ready to go? Ready to go. Is that on? Hey, he could just stay seated and introduce us and then introduce us. Yeah, yeah. No need to get out. Sure, sure, sure. Okay. Yeah. Sure. Much easier. Okay, let's do that. You're going to have to talk loud on the phone because the music in the back. Got it. Gotcha. Um, if I do this, just go ahead and look at me and I'll say either like talk louder or talk quieter if it's uh, clipping. Got it. And then I'll, I'll go like this if you're too far away from the microphone. Okay, it. okay. <laughs> yeah, this is like a, yeah, it's like a game, man. <laughs> yeah, man, that's a great idea. Yeah. All right, guys. Five, four, three. Are you good? Just kidding. Just kidding. Hello, everyone. I'm Ho FM, and that is John Nunes. We are to the shed studios. <laughs> Tilted Shed? Yeah, welcome to the first ever Tilted Shed Talks, where we are going to experience games from game developers and hopefully use their experience to craft better games. That's right. You're going to learn a lot from these guys. You're going to learn a lot, from, hopefully, from us, uh, but really more from Thomas today. Thomas got... <laughs> Tony. Tony. <laughs> Tony. 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 We learned names today. We, <laughs> we, we're learning names while we're doing this. That's okay. We've only met a couple of times. I think, That's right. So. Tony Godfrey, right? Yes. Tony Godfrey. Tony Godfrey. Yes. Welcome, Tony Godfrey. Thank Thank you. Any relation to Gilbert Godfrey? No. No. Oh, no. no. It's actually a completely different. No. Name. <laughs> I used to get. That's Godfrey. It's uh, Godfrey. I'm Godfrey. Do you do any gotcha. impressions that? Yeah. yeah, yeah. <laughs> I can't do it! I can't do it! Yeah! <laughs> that's, a, that's as good as it can. Spot on! Yeah. Spot on! Yeah. Spot on! Spot on! Very huh? talented. Yeah. Well, Tony's got a degree in computer science. I don't have a degree. No, uh, no I gave study. up. Here's the thing. I didn't want to learn Ada, which was uh. a programming language they were teaching at the time in college. And I was learning much the worse at a job that I had. So <laughs> I just kept doing the job and stopped uh. going to the school. And, uh... I learned a lot faster that way. So yeah. I'm actually, a lot of my programming background is self-taught. That's right? so cool. Yeah. 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 yeah, and I heard you walked, uh, you worked on uh, Microsoft. Or, like, I did. I worked at Microsoft for about 16 years. Wow. Um, and a lot of that was um, development in the early stages. And then I became a manager. And I got a lot less programming after that. Oh, no. But uh, uh, I learned a lot. Yeah. A lot about software development and the whole process about uh, software development as a result of that job. Yeah. Which and then amazing. right after that, you made your own software company. I did. Shark Apps. Yes. Shark Apps. Shark. Why Shark? Yeah. Uh, well, that's sort of a long backstory, but uh, kind of keep it Gilbert short. Godfrey? No, nothing, <laughs> it wasn't related to that at all. Uh, my son uh, just really loves sharks, and uh, you know, we kind of created these own stories out of um, some stuffed animals that he had. He had a shark, a whale, and a dolphin, and we would have these like bedtime stories that we would tell each other using these characters. And I just wanted to make that part of this whole thing. I wanted my company to be a fun and entertaining place that develops stories. So uh, that's how I kind of got Shark involved. That's one of the things I really love about you. I've met you twice, and t every time I've met you, there's your son sort of seems like your muse. You know, when we first met you, you t we talked about, uh, we saw the game that you were developing, and you would tell us that um, you your son was really your tester. Yeah. And that you got a lot of ideas from him, and, and now the name, the shark comes from, it's just really cool. Uh, yeah. How old is your boy now? Well, he's 14 now, uh, and he's still helping me with the testing, and I'm very lucky because otherwise I wouldn't really have testing. Right. And so I, it's true. A lot of what I do, I try to focus on something that you know he can maybe participate in and help me out with in some way because he wants to. Awesome. And and because it's more fun for me that way as well. So uh, I got to really try to talk a lot louder, and I'll I'll do my best here, yeah. guys. Just like, for for everybody out yeah. there, tonight is a uh, like a post or pre primo show for EDC they're going to do the lights testing in here and the noise so we got a little bit of a nightclub feel yeah, yeah. it's been a long time since I've been in a nightclub uh, this is uh, your first time at a rave my first rave I didn't yeah. know I was going to one tonight but here I am yeah, yeah. yeah. so it, was it everything you dreamed of no, no, I thought there would be a lot more dancing. Yeah. Uh, I, what I see is people doing gaming on computers. Yeah, so. this is more of a gamer's rave. Yeah, I did it. Uh, not the raves I used to go to, that's for sure. Yeah, yeah, definitely different. So, like, was your first game with your son? Like, did you make 
Uh, my first game actually was called Sea Animal City, uh, and it was actually a bunch of different little mini games mashed up into this one uh, mobile app that I created, and all of the characters in that were stuffed animals that he had, and we used as bedtime stories. So I wanted to put them in there, see what, you know how good I could do at you know making the artwork and creating this little world that they all lived in, and then building some games around each one of the characters. So each character in the game has some kind of activity, either a, a puzzle, a game where you just gotta kind of be, you know, it's action oriented, or maybe something that, um, you know, is more creative. Like there's one where you just draw things on the screen. So it's just a touch-based drawing program. Um, so it's got a lot of variety in it, and it's got, you know, all these little characters in it, but it's a lot to consume, and yeah. it took a lot to, to put it together. It took me about two years to get that first game out of the door. When you were creating your first game, um, what sort of tools did you look for? Where, where did you go to find what you needed to create that? That's a good question. I, I spent actually quite a bit of time just looking at what was available at the time. And this was uh, 2012, somewhere around there when I was looking. And what I really wanted to focus on was something that would allow me to deploy my game to multiple targets at once, right? I didn't want to build something just for PC, just for iOS, just for Android. I wanted to have something that was going to be, you know, build the game, focus on the game logic, and then ship it wherever I wanted to ship it. So I looked at a bunch of different packages. At the time, um, a lot of things were, were moving around. There was Unity, uh, there was um, Xamarin, and there was uh, a few other packages, but I ended up um, landing on this one called Corona, Corona because I just, there was something about it. It was the, the language that it used was something called Lua. It's similar to C or C sharp, but not really. Um, and I just felt like it was very a very flexible language and very easy um, to take, you know, game logic and put it into script. So I started with that and it was really great for quickly putting together a, a 2D game. Um, and I built Sea Animal City with that, and I built Hopina uh, with that. And, um, sorry, the music is really loud. <laughs> so, yeah. <laughs> I, don't, I don't know what we're doing now. Uh, just the music takes over. Yeah. Once you get a little taste. Right. So, anyway, so that's where I landed. Um, and then after using it for a few years and for a couple of apps, I decided, well, this is wonderful, but now I want to do VR and I want to do 3D games and that sort of thing. And obviously, Corona being a 2D engine wasn't able to help me there, so that's when I started to get into Unity. Oh, man. Like, every time I saw Hoppy Knot, I thought that was on Unity. No. Every time I saw you in uh, the OC, uh, OC Indie Dev beats. No, yeah. no, that's completely 100% yeah. Corona. That's, that's the game we're going to be playing today, Hoppy Knot. Uh, tell us a little bit about Hoppy Knot. Uh, so Hoppy Knot I created as a, a challenge for myself. There were a lot of um, endless runner type games out there um, at the time when I was looking at making one. Uh, and uh, a particularly popular one at the time was Crossy Road. And I really loved uh, a couple of things about it. One was ads were forced on the user. I could play the game. And I could, uh, if I wanted to get a reward of some kind, I could watch an ad if I wanted to. But if I didn't want an ad, I wasn't interrupted. And I really liked that aspect of it. Um, the other thing was I found it to be a challenging game and one that I wanted to play over and over again because of the random nature of it, how you have different characters and different worlds that you were in and then just a different you know, way to go each time you, you play the thing. So I modeled Hoppy Knot very much after that. Um, Every world that you go into is randomly generated each time oh. you hit that, that um, restart button. Um, and then I created a bunch of different characters in there that bring you completely different aesthetics to the, to the world. Um, so it all has that, oh. that's, it's really hard too. Yeah, <laughs> I, I've done it a couple of times on it too. Is it weird that this is the second time I played it and I got a new high score? New high score. Yeah. Is that bad? No, that's how it always goes, right? You, you, you do really bad at first. And then you do a little bit better the next time, and a little bit better, and you get better. Yeah, the timing of the, it's so well done that um, you get nervous that you're not going to jump on time. Even It's my fingers that are failing, not the game. That's right, right. It's, there's supposed to be a little bit of anxiety in there, and I find that, that those are kind of the games that people seem to be drawn to is when they're 
worried they're not going to be able to do it. Yes. Yeah. Or that they'll have to start all over again, yeah. right? So is there a story so, to this little alien guy? I mean, yeah. I, I just see. How did you think of it? How did you make this guy? Um, well, the interesting thing was there really wasn't a story. Uh, it was it was really about uh, this guy named Kenny. Uh, who builds all of these assets that you see. So Hoppinot is pretty much 100% built off of free assets that I uh, found from this guy's uh, site. He releases them all as CC0 public domain assets and encourages developers to use them, I think mainly for their you know, development, not necessarily to release games yeah. using them. But I said, why not? They look beautiful, they're cute characters, they, they, um, it, it works really well. So why not give it a shot? And uh, it made my life easier. I'm not an artist. I learned that with my first app. You know, I just, there's a lot of time that's spent in art. And, you know, I need to spend more of my time on the coding aspect. Exactly. So that's why I decided I'll just take somebody else's artwork and, and run with it. For guys who aren't artists like yourself, where can they find art, you know? Or where can they find an artist? I can tell a lot of, uh, a lot of, uh, you know, uh, programmers and writers and stuff uh, that's their number one dilemma it's like well I'm not an artist blah 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 you know yeah, exactly well it turns out that artists are everywhere and you just got to really look and, and ask around in fact when I um, started the OC indie devs meetup group um, some of the first people that joined were artists you know Kurt, Kurt who uh, often joins us pretty much every time he's an artist you know that's what he really uh, focuses his efforts on and uh, those guys it turns out are really willing and interested in participating in the indie de dev movement they want to build games they have ideas of their own and they just maybe maybe focus their efforts on the art and they're looking for people to help with the coding and so really really yeah, it's pretty slick it's really fun yeah. yeah thank you that's awesome to tell you the truth, I mean, you're you're probably on the leaderboards at yeah. this point because not a lot of people play the game. My mom always told me I was special, and now I'm starting to believe it. <laughs> you are special. I just don't know what to say. That's great. No, that's a really good score. That's really great. Yeah, uh, my son would say otherwise, but you know, he's had a lot more practice than you, I think. So. Yeah. So, so did you have like, like um, struggles on this game when you were making it? Um, pretty much every day was a struggle. Um, a lot of it is just staying motivated. Like, how many times can you play the game over and over again and hit the same bug that you've been trying to, you know, squash? Yeah. It, it wears on you. And so just the slog of continuing, finding the bug, hitting it again, going back, looking at your code, figuring out why you haven't figured it out yet. Uh, there were many, many, many days where I just wanted to say, okay, forget it. I'm never going to figure this out. I might as well just work on something else, you know? Uh, but you, you got to just you gotta stick with it and you got to ship it. And um, that's probably something that I learned from Microsoft. Just keep going and keep going. going. Did, did, you, um, did you set timelines? Did you set goals like by, you know, three weeks I need to have this done? How, how, did, you, how did you manage your time? Uh, not very well. Uh, I, I, yeah, I started out saying I need to build a game in about six months. That's what I wanted to do, and that ended up being an eight month, eight month project. Um, so, you know, I feel like in, in some ways I, I failed because I wanted to really get something done in half year, but it took a, a couple months longer. At the same time, I'm glad I was able to ship a game in, in less than a year. So, yeah. Congrats. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. Uh, pretty much, like I said, you know, I have a lot of help. My son helps me out. I, I have a, a partner up in Washington who helps me out with ideas and suggestions on the game. So I'm doing all the coding and putting all the artwork in and all the, all the technical stuff, getting it up on, you know, the app stores and all that stuff. But I am surrounded by people who are really helping me with other things that, you know, I just wouldn't otherwise see. So after the experience of uh, getting it done in eight months instead of six months, uh, what was the lesson? Uh, the lesson was, uh, don't let it worry, don't let it get to you, you know, you just gotta just keep putting the amount of effort that you can possibly put in it, don't sacrifice your family lives, your other things that you have going on, it's not worth it, it's gonna, if you're really focused on getting it done, you will get it done, and it just, you can't worry about schedules, that's another thing I learned at Microsoft, we rarely shipped anything on time, now. Oh, okay. and it didn't kill the company, right? Uh. 
So, uh, Microsoft, have you heard about this? <laughs> maybe. <laughs> I don't think I ever <laughs> shipped anything <laughs> on time there. I mean, I was in I was in quality assurance, so I was doing testing, and so it wasn't my job to stop you know the project from shipping on schedule. But that was the effect of what I did there. Right? It was you know there's all these bugs here. If we don't fix them, the customers are going to see them. So do we really want to ship now, or do we want to maybe spend a few more weeks cleaning things up? In, I mean, from, ex from I I can't name them off the top of my head, but I can think of some games where it seemed like it it. They passed the quality assurance test without actually going through quality assurance, and that always kind of hurts, right? Yeah. Like, uh, what's your experience with that? Uh, my experience is you will never ship 100% bug-free. Okay, it's just an impossibility. And yeah. accept the fact that you're going to have users because of their hardware, because of whatever other software they might have on there, or just because you missed something, and they're going to find it. Uh, and there's also going to be people who are looking for this stuff. They want to find some way to get the best score without doing all the work or whatever. And you just have to live with the fact that that's going to happen. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what? <laughs> oh, is there something we can do? Uh, um, so, now that you're making games on your own, what, what's your passion project? Uh, I'm really into VR at the moment, so anything to do with VR, I'm just really excited about. Uh, so I, uh, I guess last September, September 2000, actually 2016, uh, I got my HTC Vive and I started building uh, Google Cardboard and HTC Vive apps, and I just love every minute of being in VR. Oh. And uh, so right now, my passion projects are learning about, you know, how can I make interesting games in VR? And I'm just kind of in the middle of that mess right now. Yeah, like I saw your VR.